Hey uh, folks, welcome back to Dark Souls. We are here in Firelink Shrine, and we have one more main late game area to get through. Um, and we're going to be hopefully getting to that in this recording session, but I have something else I want to take care of first. I think I left the last session saying that we were going to wrap up Ziegmeier and uh, Zieglin's um, quest story, um, and that's what we're going to do. So, in order to uh, end their story, we need to warp down to um, Blight Town, and Daughter of Chaos is our best option there. And if you think way, way back into the past, um, you may recall that there was a path that I showed that existed, um, but that I didn't actually go down. And I was like, you don't want to go down this right now. It's a bad idea. Because um, it's a pain in the butt to get back up. Well, now that we have the Lord Vessel, and we've had the Lord Vessel for a while now, but you get the point. Um, we can use bonfires in that path to warp back out. Um, which means we can uh, get out a lot easier than we could before. And once you see what the path is like, you'll understand why that's valuable. Anyway, while I'm thinking about it, let's um, equip the Rusted Iron Ring. Just because we got some transportation to do. Um, and we got a little bit of a walk, so let's do a little bit of alcohol talk. Um, I was kind of at a loss for what I wanted to do with this uh, for this session, because because I'd, I'd been trying out all these ciders right in the in the past couple sessions, and you know as as nice of an experiment as that was. None of them really lived up to Apple, classic Apple. I think there's a reason that Apple cider is the most popular. Um, so I was considering, I uh, during Christmas, I, I got my dad some blackberry wine, and I tried a sip of that, and I thought that was really good. So I was considering maybe grabbing a bottle of that for myself, but I was like, oh, do I want to do that? Kind of humming and hawing. Because I had all these hard liquors in my room already. And I was like, well, let's see if I can make a cocktail out of those. And so I did. Um, I have next to me right now. I don't know if there's a, a proper name for this cocktail. I tried to find um, something resembling it. But I, I think there were like five different names. And I don't remember any of them, um, and those all wanted I, uh, Bailey's cream, whatever, Irish cream, whatever that is, um, which I didn't have. So what I have next to me is two parts dark rum, one part butterscotch schnapps, and one part just skim milk. That's the part that would have been the uh, Irish cream. And I'm really curious. I'm not sure how it's going to be. I can smell the butterscotch. It's a very potent odor. Oh, and there goes all my uh, cautiousness with the poison. Whatever. So once I get to our destination, I'm going to take a sip of that. It's going to be a strong drink, because you've got... Uh, I. For my recipe, I used a shot each for each part. Um, and this is this is Leech Town. This is not this is not what we want. Follow those roots. That's what we want. See, so yeah, I've got I've got three shots in my glass right now. Um, three fourths are forty proof alcohol or whatever. No, I didn't check the, the proof on the schnapps, but it's it's usually up there, so. Anyway, we climb these roots, and we're going to go inside one of these big-ass trees. I uh, remember we were in, you know, Lost Isolith, and we were seeing a bunch of these roots kind of going around. Um, invisible walls. There were invisible walls here. Or visible. Visible, not uh, actually existing walls. So yeah, we've seen these trees all before um, from the outside, and now we're finally going into one. 
And they are very, very large. Oop. I think a leech just died or something. I don't know. All right. So let's take a let's take a drink of this. I'm 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 not sure. Let's see. It's this kind of you know creamy brown color. The butterscotch is definitely I think the the central um, focus here. But it's not overwhelming. I was a little afraid it might be overwhelming. But, yeah, it goes down easy. It's definitely sweet. If you're not into sweet cocktails, don't go for it. It's also not... Uh, it's probably a strong drink, but it doesn't feel as strong as something like a, a Manhattan or something. Or maybe I'm just used to... I don't think I'm used to alcohol very much. I don't, I don't mostly drink cider, so... Anyway, welcome to the Great Hollow. Um, as you can see, we've got a bunch of branches. Some of them are obstacles, some of them are set dressing, and some of them are paths. And so, as you can tell by the way these weave in and out, this is a labyrinth of sorts. And this is why uh, I saw the there was an item. Oh wow, interesting. Um, you can see why you wouldn't want to. Oh dear, come here earlier. That'll be fine. Uh, because it's sort of easy to go down, sometimes a little easier than you might want, as I just demonstrated. Um, but coming back up, finding the path to come back up is a lot harder, because you can't just fly. You can go through the air to go down, but not so much to go up. Yeah, see, that's what I was looking for. I think that's that must be another level up or down. Yeah, it must be up. Uh, I mean, come on, it's 20,000 souls. I gotta get it. Oof. So this must be an intentional trick. Why did my blade go through that one? Huh. So you can see that little raised bit. That's got to be super intentional, right? Oof. Yeah, I'm going to have to jump. But you don't get much of a run-up. Oh. Oh, 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 no. <laughs> oh, that's bad. See, so, yeah, the thing about the Great Hollow, one of many things about the Great Hollow, is that it is super duper optional. So many people don't even know this place exists, and since it's so out of the way in Blight Town, and why would you ever want to go to Blight Town again? Um, I, I have very little experience exploring it. Hey, didn't notice you the first couple times. Didn't notice you one time that time. All right, just moving on. And here's where you see you've got a drop off. Can't walk back up that. You're going to have to find another way back up. What is that other way back up? Heck if I know. But yeah, so long, souls. Ah, whoa. Uh, another thing is that um, due to the kind of rounded shape of these roots, 
it's not always exactly clear what is walkable and what's a slope. Kind of the same issue we had with Crystal Caverns, except even worse because these are rounded. Also, come on. That should, that should totally be walkable right there. Gonna jump. There we go. So our eventual goal is to go down. It's to climb all the way to the bottom. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Alright. That could have been worse. And in the interest of not just taking a million years looking for paths here, I'm probably just going to try to be efficient about it and drop down where I see an opportunity. That looks walkable over there. Oh, and you can see there's a floor. Now, how do we get back up? I There's a ladder, I guess. How do we get over that ladder? It's over there. Okay. But you can see, one, it's hard enough to keep track of just where you are in the room. Because everything... Nothing and everything looks the same. Um, and it's just, how do we how do we walk up? Where is the path? I don't even know if there is an intended path here. Whew. That was lucky. I didn't hear. <laughs> was not planning head on that drop. Ooh, and that's that's a tricky drop there. Ooh. So you can see we're collecting various colored uh, Titanite chunks. Got the regular chunk, a blue chunk, and a red chunk so far. Wouldn't be surprised if there were some other colored chunks here that I uh, overlooked. Anyway, basilisks. You remember these guys um, from the depths? I don't know if they climbed up to the depths from here, or if they went from the depths down into here. Also be careful. You still got a ways to drop. Luckily, they're not any stronger, I think, than the basilisks we fought in the depths. So, by this point, you should be able to one-shot them or two-shot them. And the density is just a lot lower, at least in this encounter. So, you're less likely to get swarmed by, uh, by them and be caught in unsuspecting cloud. Or ca being caught unexpectedly in a cloud. Okay, so two ladders. I'm hoping that these will uh, lead to an item or something at the top. And make it worth my while. Might not, though. Oh, really? So I don't know if this was a planned um, geographical hazard on From's part. These very small ridges that I've been getting caught up on. I also wonder if it's maybe a 60 FPS thing? No, no it's not. I can hear the basilisks. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to bother exploring any uh, any farther up. I know there's at least one item we missed, but I don't, I don't think it's very important. I think it's... Odds are it's probably just another Titanite chunk. So, nothing super lore important. Now, is there going to be a ladder down, or are we just going to have to drop? I think there's a ladder. 
There's a ladder. So clearly someone has been here in the hollow, hence why these ladders are established. I don't... Uh, I think I know who that could be. Actually, you know what? Eh, I'm, t I'm mulling it over in my head. It could be pyromancers, um, you know, who lived in the Great Swamp before and has since been overtaken by nature and or basilisks. Um, and I mean, obviously, we've got the, uh, we've got corpses around, so people have been here. And like, this could be a, a poor soul who was a, a soldier in that uh, big kind of movement on Blight Town that we speculated about when we were going through Upper Blight Town. Alright, that's all of them? Okay. Now, I've never been inside of a tree. Actually, that's a lie. I probably have. But what's interesting for me as a non-botanist is that it seems like there are trees within trees here. You've got branches or roots um, kind of growing within this larger husk of a tree. Um, and I don't know if that's a cycle of death and rebirth of a of new life uh, springing from what was once past. But I do know that these trees, um, these, I think they have a fancy lore name, I don't know what they are, are holding up the world. So, if something were to go wrong, um, that'd be a problem. So it's good that these things are sprouting. However, we move down into this lower area, you can see... We've got mushrooms, and some of them are moving. Hey, hey, he's this guy's not very coordinated. I don't know, that sounded like an owl, maybe. What is an owl doing here? Oh, sorry about that, Toad. So yeah, you, you've you got this uh, old husk of a tree being taken over by a new tree, but also this new tree is kind of being um, invaded, taken over by a parasitic fungus, because that's kind of what mushrooms are, I think. Generally, when you see uh, mushrooms growing on a tree... It's, it's living off the life of the tree, and often indicates that the tree is dead, although not always. Again, I'm not a botanist. I'm probably talking out my butt. But it, it, the mushrooms nonetheless seem like a kind of foreign invader or a leech on the, on the well-being of the existing tree, which could be another indicator of inevitable death and decay in the world. Is that just the sound that they make when they die? Why do the mushrooms make owl noises? I'm, I'm not an ornithologist either, so I don't know if those are actually owls. It's a very cool sound. Anyway, conveniently, these mushrooms kind of make a stairway. And, ooh, hello, we've got larger mushrooms now. And they are powerful. Oh, look at that. They've got a lot of hit points. And, uh, just take it from me, you don't want to mess with these guys. As demonstrated there. Oh no, oh no. Little man, no. Oh. Oh, I just got, uh, swarmed my mushrooms. Okay. Well, we can take that a bit quicker this time. So one thing I'm wondering, would the mushrooms be weak to fire? And if they are, would that even be worth pursuing, considering how little I've upgraded my pyromancy flame? I don't like that room at all. 
Oh, hey, there's a basilisk and an item over there. Let's see. Uh, let's drop off here. Another soldier. There were definitely soldiers hereabouts. Ooh. Oh, disregard what I said about not being swarmed by uh, by the basilisks. We got a lot of them here. Okay, and then this will take us up a little bit. Maybe this will bring us to that item that I was eyeing. Yeah, I think it will. Or it'll just take us back here. Wow, that was a little underwhelming. There's still that item. How do I get it? I don't know. Oh, and so this is worth noting. Um, that tree in the center that I thought was kind of the new life springing from the old is also hollowed out and, and dead. So even that that cycle of life and rebirth seems to have an end. Or the, the decay is inevitable. Something like that. I am massively over speculating on this area, because I don't think there's a whole lot of, like, explicit lore significance to it. Um, you know, we haven't found any special items. We've just had soldiers, and it's a tree, and there are some mushrooms at the bottom. So I'm looking for, like, symbolic significance. You know, what the state of this tree, or these trees, um you know, how it parallels with the rest of the Dark Souls world, with the rest of Lordran. And I'm pulling it out of my butt. Which is always worth noting. Alright, so I'm gonna be careful and take care of these basilisks. Um make sure they're dead, just because I don't... Uh, uh, I don't want them uh, annoying me way down with the mushrooms in case they somehow drop down all that way and survive. That would be an unfortunate circumstance. Is that all of them? Okay, so you can see these uh, basilisks dropping eyes of death. If you have a very good memory, you might remember something about those. Where are they? There we are. I saw them. Okay. They are for a covenant. Um, the dreadful eyes of death spread disaster across neighboring worlds. Phantoms lured to the host world may end up as victims, allowing the eyes of death to multiply and leading to pr further proliferation of bane. So these are actually the covenant items for the um, for the Grave Lord Covenant. I was blanking on the name, and then I remembered I was carrying the sword from said Grave Lord Covenant. Um, use Eyes of Death in order to, I think, transport, or mess with something. You, you, you do something with them. What, uh, where's, I don't even know how to get that, and I'm not going to try. You do something with Eyes of Death and Covenant, I don't know. It's a, again, it's the Covenant that doesn't work. It only works on New Game Plus and above, so I, I don't know how it works. Something about messing with other people's worlds. Any 
anyway. Let's take care of these, these shroom babies. So I kind of want to avoid those large shrooms. Um, oh dear. Because they're dangerous. But at the same time, I want revenge. Oh man, could I drop down on there? Is that a special... Uh, this could be useful. Okay, so they're probably weak to fire, but it's not super useful. Oh, oh boy. Oh man, that's a that's a mushroom party right there. Hey, what if I Oh, I don't have very many arrows. There's no way I don't even know if I could kill that guy alone, much less everybody else. Oh, okay. All right. Uh oh oh oh. Okay. Hello, mushroom baby. I like how the mushroom babies can't even, like, punch. They just headbutt and fall over. Okay, so those guys are not going to get in the way of me and that exit. Goodbye. I don't know if those guys are worth killing for the souls. Um, I'm not going to bother finding out. Let's just move on to the next area and hope they don't follow us.